Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to that existential crisis of realizing that the act of walking is just allowing your body and self to fall forwards, only to catch yourself from the fall of gravity with one of your leg-like appendages. I bet you never thought about that, did you? Otherwise known as a Warframe video. And yes, my limbo still looks like a demented child's chew toy. So please don't judge my fashion frame. This is all Zivona's fault. So what is Warframe? Well, according to the handy dandy wiki and by the power of a quick Google search, Warframe is a fast paced action based loot shooter. So suffice to say, there's some looting and there's some shooting that needs to be done. Looting ends up with us having cargo holds full, stuffed to the brim with resources that we'll end up using from everything from crafting frames, making energy plates, and designing bizarre effigies to our lord and savior, the salvage gods. <clears throat> yes, anyway. So it's suffice it to say, having resources and the farming of resources makes much of the basis of our play and gameplay loop within Warframe. Anyone who's ever gone beyond mass rank 1 has likely had to craft at least a couple of things from the foundry. So in this video, we're going to revisit my farming guide, which definitely needs to have some dust sprinkled off of it. Starting off by talking about the resources and where they come from, and the go-to places to get said resources in the highest amount. And then we will finish off with talking about what you probably all care the most for, composition and frame choices for farming. Right off the bat, let's have a look at the resources themselves and the notion of where you get them from. Every planet in this game will have its own resource table that you can see for yourself by going down to the bottom right of any screen on a planet you're selecting and checking the quote unquote resources tab. Now, it's also worth noting that when you look to optimize your farming methods, dark sector missions are a go-to, as these will provide extra bonuses of resources and XP when you're farming and should be a go-to for any map you or resource, resource farming method you plan on doing. Keeping in as an example is that of Akkad on Eris. This is a place that you will go to when you're looking to farm things like nanospores, mutant samples, or even neural sensors. So making the most of dark sector missions is definitely a go-to when getting out into the world. The only thing to note is that open world maps like Fortuna and Plains of Eidolon also have their own unique loot tables that specifically relate to the crafted items you get from that planet or that open world area. For the sake of not boring you to tears, and adding unnecessary guff to this video, I will not be covering those resources in this guide. This will be for the global resources that are the most needed. So now that you have your tractor, farmer's cap, and country bumpkin accent, you're probably gonna want to know what to farm. So let's quickly list off all the resources, utilizing a handy dandy table that I'll have on screen, where they drop from, and personal suggestions for best places to farm them. Keep in mind, there's three types of resources in this game. Common resources, which drop in abundance and large quantities from all enemies, and these are the ones that are going to flood your inventory the most frequently. They will drop in abundance from lockers and breakable containers in large amounts, and are things such as ferrite, nanospores, alloy plates, and regardless of where you go, you'll always find you'll get a lot of them. Uncommon resources are then the ones that will drop slightly less frequently and drop in smaller quantities as well. You'll not as likely get these from breakable containers or lockers, but they will then drop in quantities of anywhere between 10 and 30, depending on the type of resource it is. And the rare resources are the final type of resource you can get, and these resources will drop one or two at a time and are usually the main purpose of going to that planet you're farming on in the first place. Defeating bosses will also give you a heightened chance of getting these resources as well. It's also worth noting that all resources can be obtained from breakable nodes throughout a mission. So if you're looking to farm specific rare resources like argon crystals, for example, sometimes it can be worth just going into a capture or an extermination mission and blasting through them just to find the nodes of resources, keeping in mind that they will then duplicate the drop of what they would normally do off of an enemy. So Argon Crystal clumps can drop anywhere between three and four and the like for the similar type of resources. And now for the dry part of this video. This is going to be a little bit dull and probably the dullest part of this entire video. So, you know, set yourself in. But if you're looking for information, this will be very informative as this is going to be a list of all the resources, where you get them from, and my personal recommendation of the best place of farming them. Starting with the common resources. Starting with alloy plates, which are found from Venus, Phobos, Ceres, 
Jupiter, Pluto, and Zedna. My personal recommendation for farming this would be from Jupiter and any of the maps therein, as they all have a high density of enemies. Usually far going in conjunction with then farming things like Hexen and Oxium will help you find these in abundance. Ferrite then drops in abundances from Mercury, Earth, Lua, Neptune, and the Void. There isn't really a quote-unquote best place to farm this. The only thing I would say is to avoid farming it on Earth, as Earth seems to be slightly lower on the drop rate for the most part. Nanospores then drop in abundance from Saturn, Neptune, Eris, and the Derelict. I would highly recommend, if you can, to farm this on the Derelict Defense or Survival Mission. The Derelict has a very high amount of enemies that are condensed in a very small area, and generally serves as a good dual purpose for farming other resources as well, such as Orican Cells and Neurodes. But keep in mind, the Derelict requires preset groups to form teams for. So if you can't make a group for it, then a good place to go is Helene on Saturn, or Akkad on Eris, which is a Dark Sector mission, as we mentioned earlier, that then allowing an increase in resource gathering. Salvage then comes from Mars, Jupiter, Sedna, and the Kuva Fortress, and somebody in my chats just told me I sound like a 90s ad. I think this works. Let's roll with it. To farm this the most effectively, I'd suggest Jupiter, as it's a hotspot for a lot of your main resources, or farm it vicariously on the Kuva Fortress while farming for, <clears throat> and I do quote this, Kuva! Yes, salvage is one of those things that you will just naturally run into a lot of as you're doing other things. Moving on to the uncommon type resources, starting with circuits, then come from Venus, Ceres, and the Kuva Fortress. And although they don't drop in as many places as a lot of these other resources, honestly, in the early stage, doing any dark sector mission on Venus is probably your best bet with this. Or, as mentioned previously, farming vicariously on the Kuva Fortress while farming for <clears throat> Kuva is probably your best bet with the circuits. Cryotic is a resource specifically obtained by completing excavators on excavation missions. Any level excavation mission will grant 100 cryotic per excavator. So really, you could just go to any of the Mars or Earth excavations at their lower level and farm them out to get quick and easy cryotic. Keeping in mind that having a excavator be destroyed halfway through completion will reward you with the amount of cryotic relevant to the percentage of completion. Xenon is a unique resource only found on Jupiter that drops from the amalgams that spawn there. Realistically speaking, the best place for this would be the Disruption or Io, as there are an extortionate amount of enemies that spawn in these two maps. But whichever map you feel gives you the most amalgams for your preference of play will be the best choice here. Plastids. Oh god, plastids. I can't tell you how much this one resource vexed me in the early days of Warframe. You just never seem to have enough of the damn stuff. Dropping from Phobos, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, or Eris. Honestly, Uranus... Haha, <laughs> <laughs> typical Warframe content creator can't say Uranus without giggling. <clears throat> anyway, Uranus and Eris are amazing places to farm plastids, either using Akkad on Eris, as we've mentioned with other resources, or Ashur or Ophelia on Uranus are probably your best bets for farming plastids. Rubido drops in huge amounts, even though it's an uncommon resource, from Earth, Lua, Phobos, Europa, Pluto, Sedna, and the Void. You can farm this so easily in large abundances that it's not really worth aiming to farm it from anywhere in particular. Just go to any of these planets and you'll find plenty of it. Argon crystals are specifically farmed from the void. These crystals, when you really want them, they are gone. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes. You farm them from the void. Basically, you want to go to capture missions or extermination missions and blitz through them for the nodes you find. But remember, they have a half-life, meaning every 24 hours, the amount of uh, argon crystals you have will be argon. I'm not. I'm not going to make that joke. Anymore. TLDR: farm them from those two missions and realize that you will be losing them on a day by day basis. So you want to use them as you farm for them. Uh, you can then vicariously farm them from the survival or defense missions on the void as well. But they generally are a bit more annoying to farm for there, just because of the inconsistency. And you'll often find that when you want these resources, they never drop. 
But when you don't want them, oh boy, you better ha have some space to store them all in. Speeding up now with control modules. These come from Europa, Neptune, and The Void. You'll want to farm these from The Void whilst you're farming Argon crystals, generally speaking. And they drop in such large abundances that really you don't have to worry about going anywhere specific to farm them. Gallium, a slightly harder thing to farm for. This drops from Phobos, Uranus, and Mars. Polarizing this farming method is quite nice, but early game, you want to go to Mars and look for the abundant clumps of gallium laying around like discarded merchandise, or go to Ophelia whilst you're farming plastids to get plenty of them from the enemy there as well. Morphix, another of those quote-unquote rare resources that tends to feel less rare than it might be titled. This drops from Mercury, Mars, Phobos, Europa, and Pluto. Mars is generally the go-to as you'll find it in large amounts just relaying around like a disused tissue, or from enemies just dropping it in abundance as well. Neurodes are found on Earth, Lua, Eris, and the Derelict. Like farming nanospores, if you can get to a, de a derelict defense or survival with a full team and farm efficiently, this would be the best. Otherwise, for Neurodes, running Eris and Akand will be a wise choice for this as well, as you get those lovely Dark Sector benefits. Oricon cells are always on people's mind, and usually can you can never find enough of them. Dropping from Ceres, Saturn, and the Derelict. You can definitely farm these nicely from the Derelict, as we've, as we've mentioned with previous farming methods. But if you want to farm them without going to the Derelict, then your probably best bet is to go to Saturn and then Helene on that map. But realistically speaking, I'd say Saturn is your best bet to go here. Tellurium is a rather weird resource, kind of like me after chugging Kuva, as it's technically meant to be an Arcwing resource, but it's so confused it actually drops from regular missions as well, so long as that mission has some element of Arcwing to it. So Uranus and the Kuva Fortress are technically Arcwing related because you actually have Arcwing segments in them, therefore those missions drop Tellurium in a quite frequent amount. Now these next Three resources are quote-unquote research resources, which are used for constructing things from the clan dojo. The first resource is found on... <clears throat> Mercury, Earth, Lua, Ceres, Saturn, Uranus, Sedna, and the Kuva Fortress, and this is Death Knight ampules. These are then used to craft the fully made Death Knight injectors. Fieldron samples then drop from Venus, Mars, Europa, Neptune, Pluto, and are then used for crafting the fully made Fieldron. Mutagen samples are then farmed from Eris and the Derelict, and really your best bet would be to go to, as mentioned previously, the Derelict, as it drops them in a heightened chance than any other mission, because they are specifically harder to get, so the Derelict is actually designed as a way to farm them more efficiently. But if you can't farm them from there, then your best bet would be to go to Eris and, well, do Akkad like we were talking about earlier. A nice little tidbit is that you can get the fully crafted forms of these resources from the invasions as well. So if you can't be bothered farming the smaller components, go and do your daily invasions and keep an eye out on the listings because that will save you a lot of time. Alrighty, so now we are now we know where things come from. Let's look at what we are going to use to farm them with. Starting with the core three frames that will make the basis of any of your farming setups. Necros is pretty much the integral core of any team. Utilizing desecration to cause dead bodies and body parts to have a 55% chance to duplicate their loot tables. Modding for as much range as possible will allow you to cover a large area to cause as many bodies as possible to duplicate their loot. Keep in mind that it also counts for those body parts, so if you're utilizing slash damage to cut body parts into smaller pieces, you can increase your loot duplication efficiency. Keeping in mind that more than one necros cannot duplicate on one body, but having double necroses can at least cover for an area where the first necros may have been too drunk to have gotten to. Cora with Pilfering Strangledone then gives you a 65% chance to gain additional loot from enemies entangled by the Strangledome. And honestly, using her with Necros is a go-to for any farming team. And although Strangledome won't affect as wide of an area as Desecration would, with decent range, it can act as a catalyst for catching and killing enemies to aid your Necros with the innate slash damage it has. And finally, similar to, similar to the way Korra assists Necros, you then have the good old hentai man himself, Hydroid, with Pilfering Swarm. Acting in almost an identical way as Korra's Pilfering Strangle Dome, utilizing this bad boy with his tentacles and any of the two prior frames will go a long way in aiding in loot duplication. Now, very quickly, there are some frames I'm going to give some shoutouts to that are quite 
complementary to your main three frames. And choosing any of these is by no means mandatory, but they do aid you in some way or another in the form of processing loot duplication. Atlas, using Orgaze Gaze, is one of the top-notch secondary additions to any team, and although it's not quite as powerful or as efficient as the previous three, it can substitute nicely for additional loot generation. It's the really the only thing to keep in mind that the loot duplication is affected by power strength, so you'll want to mod for at least 165% power strength to get maintain a 60% loot duplication from enemies you petrify. And then lower down the list of priority, you then have Ivara, who has Prowl, which steals things from her nearby enemies like a GTA 5 thief. You also then have Smita Kavat Charm, which will then increase loot income as well with its buff that it gives you. Also, utilizing Equinox's maim can be very advantageous as her maim is slash based and will help cut up bodies to allow your desecration to be more efficient. Also, a little shout out to Nova utilizing a speed build will... Well, I mean, it speeds things up, allowing enemies to get to you quicker, thus allowing you to farm quicker. There are some other things that can aid in farming, but really, setup comes down to personal taste, and adjusting your composition to fit the map and playstyle you so enjoy. But I would like to take just a moment to suggest a couple of setups and weapons that are utilized on a day-by-day -day basis when farming. When thinking about the weapons, you always want to bring slash-based weapons, but a shout-out has to go to both the Comb and the Twin Comac, as the Comb and the Twin Comac are the only two weapons in the game that can more efficiently cut bodies into more than two pieces. Most slash based weapons will split a body into two to three pieces. The twin comac and the comb actually have the possibility of splitting bodies into four to three pieces far more consistently than any other weapon. Now, team one is the team I call the A team because they're <clears throat> A-okay at farming! <laughs> yes, anyway. This team is kind of the you-get-what-you-give kind of team, and works well for anyone wanting to just get in and do some farming without any necessary input or complexity for what you do. Necros, Cora, and Speedva are the core of this team. The fourth can then be a random. The Necros and Cora speak for themselves, as we were mentioning earlier, with their synergistic looting abilities. The Speedva then speeds the enemies up and weakens them, allowing you for faster farming. The fourth slot could honestly be anything. I actually use a Loki for Grenier and Corpus missions to prevent enemies from getting stuck at a distance, of the, uh, depending on the geometry of the map you're on, especially if the geometry doesn't allow for line of sighting to cause the enemy to move close to you naturally. But then using an Equinox as the fourth is also a good choice as well for those additional slash procs. The only thing you have to worry about with that is it does cause enemies to stutter, meaning they won't come to you quite as quickly, but those slash procs at the very least will be nice for cutting bodies into smaller pieces. But really, the fourth choice in this team is entirely what you so choose. You could even bring a Trinity for more energy efficiency and survivability. Okay, so this second team might sound a little bit weird on its outset, but this is actually a far more enjoyable setup to use, and via my testing by itself, actually performs in some situations better than the previous team. And you might be asking, well, Makari, what the hell kind of witchcraft is this? Well, allow me to explain. So this so-called witchcraft team that I have mentioned is consisting of Atlas, Vorban or Nidus, Loki or Speedva, and then Necros. And allow me to explain how this works. So in an ideal situation, your Vorban is going to be used to use his Vortex to clump enemies together, sucking them in from a large distance away, allowing you to clump them all together. This clumping of enemies then allows your Atlas to use his Ore Gaze very easily. Now, keep in mind that when they are affected by the Vortex, they don't they won't visually look like they're petrified, but they are affected by the debuff. Thus, the ore gaze will allow loot duplication. What we then utilize from there in is Loki or Speedver to allow the enemies to come closer and quicker. Loki is generally a fine choice for smaller condensed areas where you've got uh, Corpus or Grenier enemies, or a Speedver is then another good choice as well. Personal preference on that one. The Necros kind of does what it says on the tin, and really, it comes down to making sure you're executing this in the proper fashion. The execution should be on smaller maps. You're utilizing geography to allow enemies to come closer to you. You're then going to have the Vorban's Vortex placed in a way that it will suck as many enemies in as quickly as possible, allowing your Atlas to orgaze them. Now, Vorban could, in theory, be replaced with a Nidus. But the great thing about Vorban is that it will also then 
suction in all of the loot as well, meaning you're going to guarantee loot income. A lot of the times with these other farming methods, and if you were to use Nidus, you sometimes might miss out on loot that may be hiding around a corner or maybe from an enemy that died too far away or anything of that nature. Vorban just guarantees the fact you're not going to miss any of that loot. And honestly, I find this setup to be one of the most enjoyable methods of farming because you have to actively engage with the farming method and just the general way of farming as it goes. Now, something that our previous farming video missed that I want to add in here is the idea of solo farming. But really, there's kind of a reason why we didn't add it into our previous video. Because the idea of solo farming is very simple. You take one of the core three farming frames that we mentioned earlier, one that fits your playstyle and the one you enjoy the most, and you just take it to a mission, a dark sector mission, or a mission where you know you're going to farm, and you utilize its actions to its fullest. Again, solo farming obviously means you're not going to have as many enemies, but you can definitely increase efficiency. Making sure you take a slash-based weapon and a frame that can duplicate loot is a very great way of solo farming. When it comes to solo farming, you're utilizing your own playstyle. You can't be relying on other subsequent frames to boost your loot. So trying to find any efficiency while solo farming, whether it's a dark sector mission or just finding missions that have slightly higher amounts of enemies in them, will go a long way when it comes to solo farming. And as a final note, there's one or two minor elements that can actually really help you here as well that are kind of obvious but are worth mentioning. Uh, utilizing fetch and vacuum for your pets is quite useful. And also utilizing the resource drop chance boosters you can get from the marketplace. Uh, they do cost platinum, but platinum is something you can get just by playing the game. Getting the resource drop chance booster and the resource booster as a whole will then, well, as they say on the tin, greatly increase your loot farming. And although this next suggestion isn't exactly a big thing, you can vicariously farm resources whilst you're not even playing in the game by utilizing these extractors. I'm going to be perfectly honest, I've never used them. But you can set them to work whilst you're not playing, and they'll casually farm resources from the planet you assign them to. All you got to make sure you do is then just pick them up once you're done with them. And there are different variants of them. Getting a better extractor will get you better resources and better chance of the rarer ones. So at the very least, you can be you can min max yourself your, whilst you're not playing. And, you know, if you want to put time and effort into that, you can also then use those extractors from the Warframe app as well, which can help you as well. And that's the video, ladies and gentlemen. I know I've probably missed one or two things here that could definitely be beneficial, but I believe we've covered all of the major elements and significantly improved this video by comparison to our previous one that we made all those months ago. And if you want to take part in these videos, as I have been getting berated by my Twitch chat through the course of recording this, there'll be a link to my Twitch chat down below where you can join us for daily Warframe streams and a bunch of other different games we play as well. So if you want to be part of a community, if you want to ask questions, get involved and learn more about Warframe or any of the other games we play, then drop on by. We would love love to have you join us. There'll also be a link to my Twitter, so if you want to keep up to date with the art that I draw or just general things that we do, then give my Twitter a follow as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see all of you top hatters. Oh, like the video as well. And I'll see all of you top hatters in the next video. ta -ra.